I've come back down to Eastbourne to Sussex installation, see my old mate Jeff Scott, who's done great work for us in the past. If you've not seen that video on the installation that he did, the security makeover that he did on my van, then have a look at that. But Steve Farrow, our old mate, he's actually got the same van as me now. He's got this Vauxhall van and he wants exactly the same package as I had, only cheaper and better, obviously. And uh, so he's come down today, we're gonna do this, and Jeff's gonna fit him exactly the same thing. So what's been going on, Jeff? Yeah, well, we've been busy. I mean, as I'm sure everyone who's watching your channel, well, you're in the trade, most of the people here are, or are interested in the trade, I'm sure you know the van security is a big problem. Lots of break-ins going on in vans, it's an epidemic. That's really what we're, we're yeah. looking at it is. Yeah. We're talking like people online, you hear all the comments, the police aren't really interested, they're yeah. not really able to help, the punishment's not enough, the risk of conviction, of uh, conviction's not enough, and the, the simplicity of breaking into some of these vans. It's just seeming like it's like a perfect storm for van to be yeah. broken into. So our job here as van security advisors, van security sales and installers is a really important one. The most important it's ever been at the moment. Now, obviously we all know that if somebody comes along, they're determined enough, they're gonna get in there with an angle grinder, but we're talking about slowing them down, making them think actually, I'll go and do the van next door because that's easier. So it's basically about doing everything you can yeah, to deter them. Yeah, this is the thing, like try and make it more difficult for someone to, to break into your van, to steal your tools, or actually to break into your van and steal your whole van. It's about, I mean, it's terrible to say it. It's, you've got to make your van the most difficult one on the street. That's, yeah. That seems to be yeah. the way of it. It goes. And now what we're finding as well is, say, like, if you live in a quiet town, maybe a coastal town like Eastbourne with nothing too much going on, yeah. it seems like the vans here don't have so much security. Like, the first thing we notice when someone comes down from London they or they come everything. down from the city, yeah, they come down really? here and they're like, wow, I can't believe all the vans going around, like, here without the security. Yeah, so yeah. we find, like, there's clusters. Like, it seems that... The, the van thieves know that the city is tough work. And it's mm. like, if I guess vans are getting broken into in the city, but it seems like they're having like little outings to the seafront or to the quiet mm. town, you know? We found like at Eastbourne, it just got pillaged like day after day for around about a week. And, and then, then they're gone. On. And then they've gone to another town. So they seem yeah. to be traveling out to a quiet town rob the place blind, yeah. and then go on to the next quiet town. And not only are they taking the tools out of the vans, but you're telling me that they're also taking the vans. In some cases, complete. yeah, in some cases, yeah. It would seem that there's definitely some vehicles that get stolen more than others. And one of which is, well, I don't, shouldn't right. really name no, one. No, no, you could, yeah, I mean, of course you the, the Mercedes Sprinter, the one, the model between 2006 through to like 2017, they've just changed it. That that model van just, it seems to be the most stolen van going. That, really? That yeah. and Ford Transits yeah. and Ford Transit Customs, they just seem to get, there must just be a massive market for them to either sell the vehicles or to sell the parts off the vehicles. Yeah. I think talking about that Sprinter problem, like that model run for like 12 years, the same shape. So if people going around with an old banger van, like one of the older ones, there's probably the need for them to buy new doors because they're rusting out. There's new gearboxes, new oh, parts. Oh, I see, so they're, they're, they're nicking for all the parts. That's what I think, Blimey. really. Like yeah, there yeah. must be an export market, but also there's a yeah. huge demand for the parts. And if you also look to buy doors for these vans, you're probably like 400 pound for a door, 300 pound for a door, yeah, for a used yeah, door. Yeah. And it might just be that, that, yeah. work, that van is worth so much and the, the technology exists to steal them mm. that they're just getting stolen all over the place. Yeah. There you are. Constant problem, constant work for you. I know you don't, you know, you're not happy about this situation. Obviously, you want to make a living, but you're not rubbing your hands thinking, bring it on, are you? You know, no, it, it breaks your heart when you see it. I mean, 2008, our business, we, we did van security, but we did a, a lot of other things as well. You know, we did parking sensors, we fitted DVD players in cars and things like that. And it was th that sort of time we hit the recession. And I did think to myself, well, maybe if we're in recession, people are gonna stop spending a thousand pound on a DVD player in the car and perhaps crime rate might go up. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, well, I didn't really enjoy fitting the van security at that time. Yeah. But I thought I'd persevere. It's not a nice job, you know, it's not no, that no, profitable. No. It's not that good a job to do. It's like cutting saws, it's noisy and all the rest of yeah. it. It's high risk, but persevere. And I invested in the tools. I invested in my own training, taking the time to learn. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's been a recession proof business. Yeah. You know, that's for yeah. sure. We're busier yeah. now than we ever have been. Yeah. But we're also finding like, you know, there's hundreds of businesses popping up that want to be van security specialists, oh, right. you know, when they really don't understand the problem a lot of the time, yeah, you know? Yeah. Are you, you're good, because you've got three excellent guys working for you now, haven't you, who, yeah. are, who are second to none. I mean, I've watched them work and they're, 
their attention to detail is fantastic. So let's go and actually watch them doing a little bit of work, shall we? Yeah, I, let's go I and check like it out. The guys, they're in there, they're fitting the locks. They, it's removed the brake light out the top there. And the reason for that is there's, um, there's some wiring for this brake light that runs down through the door. So it's making sure that obviously we don't catch the wire while we're drilling the holes. Put you down completely. So you've, yeah, so he's removed this cable, this, this plug all the way down here while he's doing the work. Then we're not gonna go through and cut into that cable and get that damaged while he's drilling the holes. And in a second, you'll see he's gonna start cutting the, cutting the holes out with the saw. So that's the reason that brake light's out. Masking tape, obviously, just so we can draw up the, the measurements. We've got the, you know, by the millimetre, it's very, very precise. These parts are bespoke. So the lock barrel that we're going to fit to this van is a certain length. Obviously, this is not like a house where it's double, double end coming from inside and outside. But this is bespoke for this van. So the kit would be like this barrel length might be five millimetres bigger than the side load door. You know, if it's a different make and model van, it might even be like a, an 80 mil barrel, you know, a big, huge barrel. So all these parts, the barrel part, the lock case part, and the brackets, they're just absolutely bespoke for this particular make and model van. It's all just so, just the measurements where everything's gonna go, sorry, wrong way around. Lock case on this side, and you'll see how this works out. You'll see how this comes together at the end when we show the demonstration of how it locks in. In this one, which is which is why it took longer. You can hear the strain as it go through. You've got one which is a few millimeters inside, and then you've got the second one on the outside. So this is the alarm going in now. So various different bits to the alarm. Telephone noise going off there. Um, so now we've got the alarm system going into the van. So the alarm system is obviously you can have the noise maker, the siren, which is going to be underneath the, the bonnet in like the exterior of the van but then you would have the actual brain for the alarm system, which is gonna go behind the dashboard here. And then we've got the sensors for the alarm. So like the PIR we're gonna put in the load area and also the um, ultrasonic sensors for the cab area. So we've got the brain behind the dashboard and then we've also got the sensors for the alarm. So we've got the, these ultrasonic sensors for this cab area of the van. So if someone breaks a window and leans in to remove contents, the alarm will go off. We've got the PIR detector for your far load area of the van. So even if someone cuts a hole through the roof, through the side of the van, gets in in any way, the alarm is gonna go off. And then we also communicate with the vehicle's computer network via the CAN bus. So we know if the vehicle's doors are being opened up by the alarm system, listening to what's going on on the computer network. We also have things like connecting to the indicators. So if the alarm's going off, the indicators will flash as well as making the noise. So if it's your, if you hear an alarm go off, you can look out the window and you can have a look and see, yeah, is that my van? I can see the indicators flashing, yeah, it is my van. This is like our first fix. We're putting the lock parts in, but they're not gonna stay in there. We're just gonna test them before we come back for our second fix. Of course, this happens straight away. It's not like waiting for your plasterer to come round in between. So talking about our first fixing, there's the locks. This is our hook type of lock. And you can see that this part here is gonna grip against the bracket which we've fitted, or the brackets which we've fitted on the inside of the van here. And that will help to prevent against like a door spreading attack. If someone's to try and force the locks like with a screwdriver or a crowbar to try and pull them apart, they're gonna stand up to an attack as best as they can by having that hook hooking into the bracket. <laughs> it's the paparazzi. Been, been following you around. What's been going on then? How was the lunch? It was nice. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, we told him you said to Danny, Charles was double. <laughs> That's no good. Don't believe it for a second. Yeah, we're just going to pick up our takeaway now. Okay, Steve, so what we've done, first off, to start with the extra locks that we've put on the door. So basically, if you put the key in, turn them all the way over, and then take the key out, that's your extra layer of security. It's the same key that fits both of these locks. Oh, that's Just, good, they're yeah. key to light, so you don't have to keep faffing around to change your, find out which key goes in which one. And this one, turn it all the way over, 
and that's it, it's secure. The key comes out in the horizontal position, just like that, so don't try and take the key out that way. If you to try and open up the door, forgetting you put your deadlocks on, oh, just make sure it's unlocked first. Unlocked. The door just opens that little bit, and the deadlock stops it from opening. Right. You might just find at this point, you've got the weight of the door pushing against the key, so just take it off, push, push some pressure against the door, take the deadlock off, and then away you go. You can just carry on using your door as normal. Like if, you're, if there's no vulnerability for fret, just in and out like during the, in the day. But as soon as you have a bit more of a high risk situation, you want the extra security, put the deadlock on and away you go. Lovely. We've also, as you can see, put this shield on here. So that's just to prevent that. Hopefully they don't get started on breaking in. The worst thing seems to be if they make the hole and they pop it open that little bit, then they might have be like inclined to, some fees will try and attack the deadlocks. Even though it's the hook deadlocks and you've got two of them, the best thing is we don't like let them get started. If we have that shield there and they don't even pop the door open at all, then there's no reason for them to start attacking your deadlocks because the door didn't open at all. Right. So also fit an alarm system to this. It's operated from this remote control. So if we go around, I'll show you the LED on the, the front. So I'm gonna lock the van and you hear the alarm come on. So the alarm actually come on on the first press of the remote control. Right. But it's actually more secure if you double lock your van. So do you hear the second press? Yep. And the second press is your factory deadlocking. It means that the internal handles will not open up the van. So double press it anyway, and then the alarm's on and your van's locked and it's all in one go. You can see the lights flashing up there at the top. Yep. This is yep. actually, we've changed it just for you. We've put a red yep. LED that's not quite as bright as our usual bright blue yep. flashing yep. LED yep. on there. Now this alarm will detect, if anyone opens any of these doors or the bonnet, the alarm will go off. We've also got these ultrasonic sensors in the cab. So if someone breaks a window and leans in to remove contents, that will set the alarm off. And of course, in your tool or cargo area of the van, we've also added that PIR in the back there as well. So just unlock the van. I actually use the boot button and that right. disarmed the alarm. Okay. Or if you just use the unlock button, that will disarm the alarm too. And if you look in there, you can see that PIR detector, and that's detecting any movement into this load area of the van. So even if someone was to cut a hole through the roof of the van, through the side of the van or through the roof, then that will pick them up. Yeah, the alarm's going to go off. That's lovely.